Welcome to Agile and System View Introduction to Digital Filter Design. In this video, which is part one of a two part video sequence, the user will be introduced to digital filter design using Agile and System View. Uh, using Agile and System View's filter designer graphical user interface, we will explore how to create low pass, band pass, high pass, and band stop digital filters using uh, different filter design methods for both IIR and FIR filters. Uh, in this video we will create a simple low pass FIR filter that can be used as a simulation model using System View's data flow simulator. Those simulation models can be used in higher level simulations of communication physical layer uh, simulations or any digital signal processing uh, simulation that requires digital filtering. The product featured in this video is the System View W1461 Communications Architect configuration, which is the base configuration. The digital filter design capability shown is included in all System View bundles and is a standard feature of the System View product family. Let us proceed now with the design of a digital filter using System View's Filter Designer UI. To access the filter designer UI, we need to place a generic digital filter part onto our schematic. We can access the generic digital filter part uh, by opening up the algorithm design library, which is the standard design library uh, inside of System View. And we can filter the list of parts in the algorithm design library by typing in filter under the filter by dialog in the parts selector. And here we can select the generic filter design part and model and place that onto our schematic. Or we can use the F hotkey, which is a standard mapped hotkey uh, that will bring a generic digital filter part onto my schematic. So let me go ahead and place that part onto the working system view schematic. And from this part, I can access the filter designer UI by right mouse clicking and selecting filter designer. That will bring open the filter design UI where I can now go ahead and change uh, various parameters to design different digital filters. The digital filter UI allows me to design low pass, high pass, band pass, band stop, and custom digital filters. Uh, for custom digital filters, I can design uh, IIR response filters uh, using either Z domain or S domain parameter entry. And by selecting each one of these IIR types you will see a different dialog open where I can enter in the various parameters to create the response that I desire. Uh, for FIR custom filters I can specify filters either by a piecewise linear uh, construction of a frequency response in both magnitude and, and phase or I can enter in the taps of a filter. I can do that either manually using the parameter dialog here or I can go to the coefficients tab and actually import coefficients if I have a coefficient file in ASCII text format. For this particular design, I'm going to go and design a very simple low pass filter. So by selecting low pass response, uh, I can now see a new set of options in the digital filter UI. For a low pass, I can design either an IIR or FIR low pass. Uh, for IIR, I can select many popular uh, standard response types like Bessel, Butterworth, Chevy Chevy, Liptic, or Synchronously Tuned. Uh, the uh, design method that's used in System View for creating a digital filter for each one of these filter types uh, involves the creation of an analog prototype filter and then bilinear transformation to convert the analog prototype filter at the appropriate sample rate to the Z domain. Uh, for FIR response, I can select either a Parks-McClellan or half-band Parks-McClellan uh, method for designing FIR coefficients, or actually I can also uh, select the windowing method to design a standard FIR filter. Or I can select some standard uh, communication-oriented filter responses like a Gaussian transitional filter, a raised cosine filter, or a edge filter, which is unique to the GSM edge standard. For this particular filter response, I will just go and use the Parks McClellan filter. I want to design a 10 kilohertz filter that is uh, eight times over sampled. So I will set a sample rate of 80 kilohertz by typing 80 e to the minus three uh, for my sample rate parameter. 
I want a pass band ripple of uh, 0.1 dB, a stop band of 15 kilohertz, and a stop band attenuation of 50 dB. And you can see immediately in the frequency response plot that is associated with the filter UI, uh, you can see my low pass response with a corner frequency uh, around 10 kilohertz and a stop band rejection of around 50 dB uh, past 15 kilohertz. So the frequency response of this filter looks uh, appropriate and reasonable, but I may also want to look at the phase group delay or impulse response just to be sure that the filter is giving me uh, what I am expecting. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the impulse response and let me just reposition the windows here so I can see both the frequency response as well as the impulse response of the filter. Now for <coughs> From the filter UI, I could also control the data type of the specific model that's generated by the digital filter tool for use in simulation by selecting the data type pulldown. Uh, for this filter, I'm going to just create a simple floating point filter. In part two of this video, we will explore creating a fixed point filter that can be used for HDL code generation and implementation in an FPGA. I could also select a complex filter type as well as an envelope filter type which is a data type that is unique to system view that allows me to create RF uh, filters uh, with an appropriate carrier frequency uh, center frequency as well as uh, a particular sample rate. So I'm going to just select floating point and click close and what I'm left with in my schematic is a floating point FIR filter and that's denoted by the blue arrows on this filter and uh, what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and set up a simple simulation to apply a impulse source to my filter and do some data collection and post-processing just to ensure that this filter is giving me the response that I expect. So I will create uh, an impulse source by just typing impulse into my part selector. And here is my impulse source. And I will also type in sync to place a data collection sync onto my schematic. And I'm going to change the amplitude of my impulse source to actually set it to the sample rate. And the reason why I'm doing this is to ensure that the area under the impulse response uh, equals 1 and then the resulting uh, frequency response, which I will create with post-processing of the data, gives me a passband um, insertion loss of 0 dB. So now I'll set up the simulation analysis by setting my simulation sample rate to the same 80 kilohertz that I synthesized this filter, otherwise I will get an incorrect frequency response. I will generate a um, number of points in my plot uh, to be 256, which is a very simple power of 2. Um, I can select uh, any number of points that I'd like. And I'm just going to go ahead and click simulate and you can see the simulation is already done. It has now created a data set and here I can see in numeric tabular format the impulse response of this filter and to plot that on a graph I can simply right mouse click select add to graph create a new graph and there is my impulse response. Now to show the frequency response of this filter I simply need to take the FFT of this impulse response and I will do that by adding a new graph to my workspace I will select the same impulse data which was collected in the S1 data sync and I will select spectrum as the post-processing type and to get the correct scaling I will just edit the equations that are used to calculate the spectrum or the FFT and I'm going to change the spectrum type from power spectrum to voltage spectrum and I'm also going to change the FFT scaling to scale by the time step or by the sample rate, the inverse of the sample rate. So I will change the spectrum type to 1 for voltage spectrum and the FFT scaling mode to 2 for sample rate scaling. And then if I just click OK, I can now see my frequency response and it looks just like what I expected in the digital filter UI with a passband frequency of around 10 kilohertz, a stop band frequency of around 15 kilohertz, and a stop band attenuation of about minus 50 dB. And I could just simply file all my plots and I can see simulation schematic, my two responses, and the tabular format. If I wanted to quickly change the response of this filter, I can do so again by just right mouse clicking on the filter part, selecting filter designer. 
come in and I can change my top band frequency to something different, click close, simulate, and now I have a new response. And this filter part can now be used in a larger schematic uh, to do pulse shape filtering on a communication signal or any other signal processing that I might require. In the next part of this video, we will go ahead and explore the same filter, except we will look at a fixed point filter tech.